Praise the Lord and God bless you again. Welcome to Triumph Tuesday. This is a 10 minute midday manner. Thank you again for being with us today. We continue in the book of First Corinthians. We're at chapter number four, looking at the letters of Paul. And I'm going to hang out a while in the book of Corinthians. Let's see what the word of God has to say with it, for us, to us um, on today. God bless you. Amen. God bless you today. Heaven smile upon you. We thank God for you being with us. Um, midday matter, you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. All of our information is there below. Connect with us. If you're not subscribed to one of our YouTube channels, uh, do that. Triumph Church Roanoke channel or Triumphant Living. Two different platforms, two different um, uh, levels of content, as well as our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Our old-fashioned, I guess by now, stuff is uh, old mail and the website. Uh, you can get information there as well. And our website will lead you to our social media platforms. But um, feel free to reach out to us. But do be a missionary, e-missionary, and share this content with someone uh, that uh, can be blessed by it. First Corinthians chapter number 4. Uh, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, and he says, This is how you should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required that stewards, they, that they be found faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I'm not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in, in favor of one against another. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Without us, you have become kings. And would that you did reign so that we might share the rule with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, like men sentenced to death because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour, we hunger and thirst. We are poorly dressed and buffeted and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we entreat. When have become, we have become and are still like the scum of the world, the refuse of all things. I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you have countless gods in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you, Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach them everywhere in every church. Some are arrogant as though I were not coming to you. But I will come to you uh, soon, if the Lord wills, and will find out not the talk of these arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod or with love in the spirit of gentleness? So Paul is still, uh, still working through the issues that he's had uh, in the first three chapters and dealing with uh, the high-mindedness, the non-humility of the Corinthian church. And so um, he's trying to take down uh, and he's working against the mindset of the Corinthian church to boost up certain leaders, certain preachers, certain teachers that had come through there. And so he's telling them that, um, that you shouldn't have the mindset that one is above the other, that you uh, should regard us as servants and not lift us up beyond what is uh, right in the eyes of God. 
And so we have to have a mindset that does not put men above. He goes on to explain, look, we are the lowest of the earth. Uh, we are the ones that, um, that have uh, the least. Um, we are the ones that have to uh, look at things and, and wear a greater burden because of the very fact that we are the messengers of God. Uh, looking through the scripture, he talks about how to judge and that um, that he says he doesn't even judge itself. A lot of times we can tend to think that we're right and we're able to con put condemnation on somebody else. But but Paul was saying, look, the ultimate judgment is going to come from God. He says he don't think he has anything uh, to be judged by, but uh, it doesn't mean he's acquitted. All things will come to God. So the will of the heart or the purposes of the heart is what's going uh, to be laid out before God and judged. And so, um, so we have to not put our trust in, in men and in what they say, but also put our trust in the word of God. And we can't put men above one another uh, because it can make us uh, seem like we're better uh, than uh, one another. It's not for us to declare who is great and who is mighty and who is this, that, and the other. I come from this church. I come from that church. I come from that diocese, that state, that region. And, and competition. There shouldn't be competition between us because of where we come from. Who is our who is our teacher? Who do we learn things from? And we can't boast in that. And because different people have different ways of explaining it, and you were able to learn it through somebody else's explanation, explanation, that doesn't make you boast that you have more knowledge than somebody else because all of it's received from God. And so you can't boast that that you have it all or you know it all when you only got it from God. And maybe it's a different way of looking at the same thing. But still, it's the wisdom of God that's made and re revealed uh, to mankind. And so we have nothing to boast on. It is not our intellect, but it's the revelation of God. And so moving on, we look at it. We, we, uh, and what I got out of these next few verses was that he's telling them because you have the word, the word you've, you are able, uh, and he calls them rich and you're like Kings and you reign. You have this bountifulness of the word to unlock the mysteries of God and the mysteries of life in this world. Um, that makes you kings. And he said, I wish you could be kings, but he said, we could be kings. But for me, the carry of the word is what he's saying. Uh, we become a spectacle to the world, angels and to men. Uh, we're fools. We're, uh, we're weak. We, we, we the ones have to endure the weight of ministry when others can just walk away and do things. There is something, there's a yoke about the neck of a true minister that says, I can't walk away. I can't, in some cases, I can't get violent. I have to endure whatever uh, life throws at me, whatever I have to endure. I have to endure the burden of being single, but yet carrying the word. I have to endure the burden of being married and dealing with the troubles in marriage, but not, uh, but yet letting having to act in a way that that marriage glorifies God. When I would want to do something else, when I want to act in a certain way, or even do something that's straight up. Uh, whatever evil violent whatever the weight of 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 uh the ministry is upon you the weight of the gospel is upon you so i have to be weak uh, but you're strong he said uh you're held in honor i'm in disrepute he says we hunger we thirst we don't have the best of things of the world uh sometimes we're homeless he says um when we are laid out we have to bless when we know we're done wrong and folk just outright do not care about your feelings, thoughts, passions, cares, concerns. You have to provide goodness. Even when people don't sacrifice for you, you have to sacrifice for others. And so you have to endure that uh, through that. And you, you get slandered. People talk about you behind your back. You're the subject of whatever, you know, they, they talk about you. They got a little private conversations and putting you down, but yet you have to see that and when others would retaliate, you have to stand down and put it in God's hands. Uh, and so you become the refuse, the trash can of all things, the scum of the world. And so 
but he just wants to put that. He says, I don't, I don't want to make it shame, but I want to show you of what we have to go through. Um, and so he says, he is your father in the gospel. You have a lot of people teach you, but I'm your father. I care about you. I have that link, that connection, that birth connection that cares about you, even though the others that will use words. And that's why I say, when I come to you, I don't come looking for the people with words. I come looking for their power in verse 19. He said, I didn't come with words. I came with power. Uh, and so I'm not looking for arrogant people with words. I'm looking for people uh, with power. And that's what he wants. It's not about your words. It's about the power of God. And let us seek the closeness of God that brings about uh, that power. So when I come as your father, do I come with a rod or do I come with the spirit of gentleness? And uh, so he says, which one you want? Uh, what you want? What you want? No. <laughs> Um, but, but that's, that's a father that cares about his children and doesn't want to see them go astray. And that's who Paul was to this church. And so that admonishes us. We love the church. We love people and we want our lives to be a, uh, an imitation of what God would have. And so we love when we're hated, we're blessed when we're persecuted. Um, but nonetheless, we're not lifted up when we come into the knowledge of God but we're helpers one to another. Hey Amen. I'm over my time by a little bit. We thank God for your day. Bless you on your lunch hour. Hey Amen. And God continue to bless you and keep you a good rest of the day. Hey Amen. And if it's not lunch, you just watch us. We thank God for you just tuning in and keeping up with us and pray for us and we'll pray for you and we'll continue to watch God change things. God bless you in Jesus' name.